Hi, today I want to talk about the Ashbury Revival in the spiritual climate that seems to be spreading. And one half, we have anxiety and fear over here. And over here, we have love and joy and peace. You see, Ashbury has a purpose, and I want to talk about it. Actually, Ashbury has, is a name that is turned up in actually three revivals. It's interesting that when I was uh, reading up about the Jesus Revolution in 1970, that this happened uh, in San Francisco in a neighborhood called Ashbury Heights Streets. And God was uh, doing something on Ashbury Street then. Now we have the Ashbury Revival. So when it comes up twice, uh, you have to look at revival history and say, God, why are you using this name again? I don't know if you've you've seen the the Jesus Revolution movie, but it has come out at a timely uh, time in history when we can review the history of what happened in the past when revival broke out. You see, in 1970, in this area uh, of San Francisco. Uh, these hippies started to get together and they started looking for something. They were looking for uh, a, another culture because the one that they were in was, was just leading them to drugs and the drugs were not the answer to their anxiety. They were looking for love and peace. Love and peace. They had signs and even uh, the president, Richard Nixon, would go around and say, peace, peace. You know, the peace can only come from God. But as I was looking up the, the name Ashbury, I said, God, why are you showing me this name? And actually it means fortified place. It came up in the second great awakening when the United States was birthed. Isn't that interesting? There was a man, his name was a minister. His name was Francis Ashbury. And in 1776, at the birth of, of the U.S., uh, he wanted to spread the gospel. That was the whole goal. And they started praying together, uh, this Francis Ashbury, with other ministers in Christ-like unity, Lutherans and Methodists and Presbyterians and Quakers, all praying for the same thing, that there would be a revival or an awakening in these new colonies or these new states. And by 1800, there was a full-fledged revival. So if this name Ashbury comes up in three revivals, Obviously, it's important. The name means fortified place. In a mighty fortress is our God. God wants to free us from the anxieties and the fears that are being released in the world. And he wants to give us his love and peace at this time. I'm praying for this for all of us out there. And, and I'm going to put a challenge out there. Let's pray for his peace and his love to show up in various places, just like it spread from Ashbury University uh, College. It is now ending up all over the place. In my own local church here, the pastor was given a message on fear last weekend. He had a bunch of calls and, and there was all these people full of fear and people were running to the altar in this service right here in Texas. And, and so it was like, it's not just happening in one place, it's happening all over. Well, let's get back to the purpose behind revival. And what God was doing. Is there a theme running in 
in these things. And so I started to look at the first Great Awakening, which it was actually in Europe in 1720, and it was a romantic, romantic, isn't it interesting? Like intimacy with God, that movement. And then in the, uh, around 1800, when it broke out again, this was a, a move of unity to bring the gospel, to evangelize. So there was a theme of, of really connecting again with God's love. And then I looked at, uh, there was a third great awakening that happened around the 1900s. And many of you know about the Azusu Street Revival. So I looked up the name Azusu, and it actually means lily. I had been praying that God would open up my eyes and your eyes out there to what he's doing all around us. Uh, recently, there was a lady that came to me. This is a personal testimony, and she had all kinds of trouble with a, with a house. And and she there were these two guys living together, and they were doing all kinds of criminal things at this house, and it was just a mess. And 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 I told I prayed about it, and God said love on these two guys, and and uh, this lady she knew Jesus, and so. She reasoned with them, and, and I told, told her what to do, and they gracefully moved out. And they thanked us for being so kind to them when they moved out. After creating criminal activity in the property, they just left. God has answers. And in that answer, we were cleaning up the property, and... I heard this shofar blowing and her granddaughter shows up and her granddaughter's name is Lily. And then I go, Lily, I was just doing an, uh, a study on Azusu and it means Lily. Now this is the second time. What about the lilies? So I looked in scriptures and in the Song of Songs, uh, in 2 and 1, it, it says, I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. A Song of Songs is about a romantic relationship with man and woman and how it is a parallel to our relationship, a romantic love relationship with our God. And here, God is the lily, lily a, a rose of Sharon. Solomon even picked up on this in uh, 1 Kings 7, 19, when uh, Haran formed the pillars, he said, put lilies at the top of the pillars. The pillars are Boaz and uh, Achan, which stand, stood for the strength and beauty of God that he would give us when we entered into that place that he has for us. In all of this, I sense that uh, God is, has a theme of love that he's release, releasing. When Lily showed up in this, this house, uh, I heard a shofar going off. And the shofar is like a trumpet call of, of God. And it ended up being the ringtone of the lady that, uh, that w was managing the house that had all this trouble. And all these people, when these two guys moved out, all these people in the neighborhood started coming out. It was like you could sense the spiritual atmosphere was changing. God is doing something, beloved. If we have eyes to see and ears to hear, and we go back to the word of God and, and see what, what do these things mean? There's scriptures connected to these things. Peace and love is the theme of this revival. There's even another group that have the communion revival going on. And that's about this, the same thing. When the, the hippies were looking for peace and love and, and they, got, they were trying to relieve their 
anxieties with drugs, God had another way to release, release their anxieties. Beloved, this is what God's doing. You might feel fear or anxiety, just like many were calling our church this week. But God has another way. Love is a commitment. In the way we've been doing things in the past are now getting shaken so the things of God will remain. And so I'm praying that you would seek God in the release of any anxiety or fears that you would have. Run to that altar. That's what this revival is about. And die to your old ways so that this new love and peace can arise in us. The harvest is great. In what we sow, we shall reap. That's guaranteed. So when the wicked, they sow wickedness, it's not going to end up good. They're not going to, uh, wickedness is going to come back on them. Just like uh, it came back on Haman in the book of Esther. He set up a gallows to hang God's man Mordecai. But that wickedness came back on him. So be encouraged that if you are sowing good things of God, you have a harvest of love and joy, and peace coming back to you, guaranteed. God bless you all.